So, uh, welcome to uh, anyone who's uh, following online uh, on our YouTube channel or on our website, mapping.montrealmosaic.com. Uh, thank you for joining our workshop today. Just so you know what we're doing is we're going to rec we're recording this live stream and it'll be uh, archived at youtube.com slash mapping the mosaic. So you can come back and watch it anytime. Uh, you can go back and miss uh, check up any on anything you've missed. Uh, my name is Jeff Agambar. I'm the project manager for mapping uh, the mosaic. Uh, Montreal and its diverse communities, a project of the Quebec Anglophone Heritage Network. I'm just going to show you what it looks like now, and then I'm going to introduce who's with us, and then we're going to go through kind of an introduction uh, to the website and the project, uh, and walk you through all the different functions of the website. This is what mapping the mosaic is. I'm just starting a screen share. There we go. So, uh, I mean, if you know Google Maps or uh, uh, Google Wonders or maybe there's a website down in, uh, no in uh, New York, rather, called City of Memories, uh, I mean, there are lots of these kind of online mapping uh, sites that are cropping up. It's something that the Internet makes possible. Uh, is uh, storytelling, data presentation that is location aware. Uh, Quan started this project because they wanted, uh, Quan is the Quebec Anglophone Heritage Network. Uh, I'm on contract with them to run this project. Um, this is really a place for you to tell the stories that you care about in Montreal history. Uh, we, you can see that it's actually capable of uh, video. If you have uh, online uh, embedded YouTube videos, they can be added to your thing. I put in a fair number of NFB uh, embeds already as well. I like videos, that's why I kind of gravitated to those first few examples. Uh, there's also uh, you might be you might have access to historical photos, for example, in the McCord Museum Digital Archives. There's lots in there. These are the tobogganing slides up at the top of Mount Royal back at the turn of the century. Tobogganing was a huge fad. It had uh, not really been. It was a new new thing. Tobogganing, and uh, it was quite a social event for a time. Here's another example of. Uh, the funicular railway that used to run up the side of the mountain. So there's photos, or I mean, very typical this time of year is uh, here's some photos of what the ice shoves, the way that the ice used to shove from the St. Lawrence River right up under the bank. Lots of really interesting images there. Um, now, those are kind of historical examples. Uh, what we'd really like to see on here more and more are. Uh, just because I've mentioned ice shoves, uh, are examples like this. This is uh, Matthew Farfin, who actually works with Quan, uh, put up this excerpt from his grandmother, I believe, uh, her own personal memoirs, her own personal diary that she recorded memories for her family in. And there's a little excerpt here about what it used to be like in the spring when people would uh, yell, the ice is moving, and they'd all run down to the bank to see the ice that had been stocked up on front of their, their front lawn all, all winter lawn starting to move along. It was a big event every year. So this is an example of the kind of thing we'd really like to see in here, which is people telling their stories of uh, maybe stories they've inherited, stories they've lived. Um, we would like to see people telling the story of Montreal's English-speaking communities uh, in the way that matters to you. That's just a very general uh, introduction so you know what we're talking about. I'm going to come back to the chat room here, to the, um, to the camera here now and show you uh, and introduce you to who I have with me here today. Uh, um, to my right, your left, is uh, Francois Guillet of the Quebec Labrador Foundation, who's going to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. So I'm Francois of uh, Quebec Labrador Foundation. QLF is uh, a non-for-profit organization involved in uh, environmental project and uh, culture and heritage project in Eastern Canada and uh, New England and some uh, countries at the international level. We have experience in uh, online mapping project. Uh, a few years ago, we did a project called Atlas Richelieu Missisquoi. We gathered uh, data about the heritage along the Richelieu River and along, uh, around the Missisquoi Bay. So we would like to do the same thing for the Greater Montreal area. 
a people at last uh, about the heritage of Montreal, and we are happy to be involved uh, in this. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, QLF's been doing, uh, their main office has been responsible for the programming of the ideas that have come out of Quan and here, and they've done a really excellent job. We also have Ben Loomer of the Community Learning Centers, uh, who's going to introduce himself and his organization as well. Go ahead, Ben. Hi, everybody. My name is Ben Loomer, and I'm the Community-Based Learning Coordinator with the Community Learning Center Initiative, which is a network of 37 community schools across the province of Quebec. And I was really excited to partner with the Mapping Montreal Mosaic project because this is essentially community-based learning. And I think it's really a great opportunity for teachers and students to look into their local uh, heritage around the Montreal area, collect stories, and help preserve heritage. And in that aspect, they are performing service learning because they're pro uh, providing a service to their community. I did a bit of research into the Quebec education plan and I really believe that there's some strong links to the social studies, English language arts, French as a second language and uh, technology competencies and programs so I encourage any teachers and community partners to work on this project and if you have any questions don't hesitate to send me an email and I'll uh, help you and your students take part in this great initiative and get pinning all over the map. Thank you. <laughs> that's great, Ben. Yeah, um, I mean, that's a, that's a good example of, uh, I mean, obviously this uh, website, this platform has been designed as uh, uh, to suit the needs of, of anyone who wants to use it. Uh, I was doing an interview on CBC earlier this week, and I was asked, well, what kind of stories do you want on the map? And I can talk about the kind of stories I'd like to see on the map, but really we've designed it as, a, as an open platform. It's very easy. We're going to show you very soon. Uh, it takes just seconds to create an account. You can be posting uh, a, a story within a, a minute after that, really. It's, it's really quite simple. Uh, and so we would like to see you use it to tell the stories that matter to you, whether they'd be surprising. Uh, I mean, just to list some examples. Um, I mean, the, what Ben was just talking about, for example, in, in, in schools. Let's take that. Um, uh, recently, I was talking to Riverview uh, Elementary on the South Shore uh, in Verdun, rather, uh, and uh, they're in the process of celebrating their 85th anniversary. So this is an example, whether it's in a school or you work for an organization or you just have your own personal interests about Montreal history. Um, they are celebrating their 85th anniversary. They're setting up projects with a local historian where they can go back into the history of the school and the community. Uh, and they're considering uh, using mapping the mosaic to then plot out different points and photos uh, and aspects that they found. <laughs> they showed me a, a strap and a strap book where the teachers back in the early 1900s were recording every incident where a student was, was strapped. I have some photos. We'll be putting those up. But <laughs> less violent, they'll also be going into the history of social uh, stuff in the neighborhood, uh, sports history of the school, uh, history of achievement, and, and key people who come out. I'm sure they'll be touching on all of those. Or, for example, uh, we're right now in the middle of Black History Month. Now, uh, a teacher could be assigning, I know a lot of teachers do, uh, assigning projects for Black History Month where they ask their students to research um, the history of, uh, of that community and individuals and events that have marked uh, the history of, of Black Canada, of Black Canadians and Black Montrealers, etc. Now, if you as a teacher, or I mean, you can, you can carry this over to your work in your organization, whatever you care about in your life. Um, if a teacher were to assign to a group of 20 kids, uh, go out, find me a story, find me a person living or for, uh, or, uh, or, or just a key luminary pick, figure in history uh, and write a point about that, put it on this map. The following year they assign the same thing, but say to the kids, now go on the map, see what we did last year has to be new people this year. You do that for four or five years, you're going to have a very dense neighborhood story uh, community story, that a resource that develops over time. Now, if you carry that out to the whole uh, map, we would really hope that uh, people start to use this map to tell the stories that matter to them and build up a really interesting portrait of different neighborhoods, different communities, 
uh, different unknown stories from around uh, Montreal, the South Shore, all the way out to Hudson, North Shore, Laval. We want to hear your stories, uh, and we want to see them on the map. It's really great to see those. This is what a, this, uh, a site like this allows is that you see those site those stories in context in the place where they happen. It's really fun to explore, and that's what I'm going to show you here shortly. Um, just trying to think. Uh, Oh, another example like that. Uh, I was talking to someone at a at a at a at a theater at a play I was at the other night, and she was saying, "Oh, this is great. I wanna I wanna when I go and visit my grandfather on the weekend, uh, he's always telling me stories. I love his stories. He loves the internet. I wanna start using this that when he's telling me stories, we can sit down and you know tell the story of that." His, that really funny story he tells about the the events on the day of he and Grammy getting married, you know, we can put it right there on, on the on the location. This building maybe doesn't exist anymore. There it is. Here's a human story, lived experience in that place. Um, I can ramble on. I just wanted to sort of situate it that way. But let's get back to the website because I want to show you how this works. Um, so I'm just going to open that up here again. Start screen share. Incidentally, I can't see the chat room while I'm doing this. Ben's going to be watching that for the people that are following uh, in the chat room taking part. Uh, if you have questions as we go along, you can bounce them off of Ben, hold them for after we finish this live broadcast, and then we can get into the Q&A. Okay, so here we are looking at the website. Uh, Mapping.montrealmosaic.com. You see the address up there. Uh, Montreal and its diverse neighborhoods. Uh, let me just zoom out. You can see that we've already got a fair amount in there. I mean, that's uh, largely to this point, uh, the work of Francois and myself, uh, people involved with Juan, or uh, people who've taken part in the few workshops we've already held. We have some more coming up. So if you're interested, let me know. You have my email there. Okay, so here's Montreal Island. Now, as you can explore, obviously, you can double-click to zoom. You can use the slider to zoom. Um, it's, it's Google. It's it's like Google Maps, although we've actually built in OpenStreetMap, so we have a few controls that you don't get in in uh, in uh, Google Maps. Um, uh, to explore, I'll just point out these headers: explore, contribute, and about. That's a distillation of a lot of conversations about what we wanted this website to have in it. Um, I'm going to show you the explore tab. And how to use the how to navigate the website. Uh, Francois is going to take you through how to contribute a point, and then we'll come back and just sum up. Okay, so as you can see, there's different points. First off, under this legend, you see that the map is really divided between history and memory. History being uh, factual, objective, encyclopedia style uh, history of Montreal. For example, here's a fun one. This is. Uh, right over here. I'll zoom in so you can see the neighborhood. Corner of Ontario and Delorignier. There used to be a baseball stadium there. Uh, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, it was one of the major sports centers in town. Uh, the Alouettes played there. Uh, and the Mount Montreal Montreal Royals, they were called, was a professional team that uh, were actually the uh, the farm team, the, the the main farm team for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Uh, and incidentally, around that time, anyone who knows their history uh, of sports will know that Jackie Robinson was the first uh, black player to uh, break through the color barrier. He actually started that process here with the farm team in Montreal. So someone who had written a story in uh, Quebec Heritage News uh, magazine put out uh, Seasonally by uh, by Quan, the Quebec Anglophone Heritage Network, um, had a story about the role that Montreal, the unique role of Montreal in in that period of, of peak players breaking breaking through the color barrier. Here we can see the an excerpt from that story, a link out to the original place. We can see pictures of Jackie Robinson and the stadium links to other places. In the comments section there's a bit of a conversation between Matthew and myself about uh, how it's a cool story and then a link out to a uh, CBC video about that. So you can see that uh, here we've got a point with photos, uh, an interesting point in Montreal history unknown to a lot of people uh, even though they already they know the broad strokes of the story um, along with photos. Uh, let me just pull out of there and we'll go find another story. Um, I like this documentary uh, about uh, the history of uh, 
the main and the main's uh, famous uh, role as sort of a, a very diverse and multicultural immigrant population on the main. This is an NFB documentary. You can watch that right here. You can know that you are in the main while you watch it. You can uh, be uh, flipping to other map views, satellite view, for example, you know. Uh, which might make sense in another one. For example, that funicular story I was showing you here st earlier, you can see that there's still kind of remnants of uh, that neighborhood. Uh, another fun thing, just as we sort of continue to fly over the map, uh, let me just zoom out. Look at this over here. This is a fun thing uh, that we, we found some maps on Google Earth that, uh, that date back to uh, the 17-1800s. And uh, it's kind of fun to see, if I go back to 1758, this map right here, right down in the old port area, uh, it's kind of cool to see that that's still the core of Montreal. Uh, it's tiny. If I zoom, oh, the map's gone gray here for a moment. Let me just show you. It's also fun to drag Google Street View over top of that. <laughs> this is just a, a coincidental thing. We didn't design it this way, but you can see that the street plan is still identical. Uh, so here we are looking at uh, where Centaur Theater uh, is today. You can see that was right on a Jesuit uh, orchard back in the day. So there we are, Centaur Theater. Kind of fun. All right. Uh, continuing our tour, I'm just going to refresh the page because I'm moving quickly through the site. Uh, graded out there. Um, letting that reload. So that's just a very quick look at, I mean, out here, just as another example, here's uh, uh, an audio podcast done by uh, a school about Charlie Wilson, who was connected to one of the biggest train robberies in the history of train robberies. And he was hiding out in Hudson, Quebec for several years until he got caught. And right here, uh, just to, again, to give you an idea how it works, I'm reading about uh, a summary of this, and I can link out to listen to uh, something that exists elsewhere. So obviously we want the website to develop into uh, a place where we can read stories, watch documentaries right here, look at photos right here on the map. But if you have something on your own website, something maybe you work for an organization, um, you work for a school, uh, you have your own blog. I was talking to a guy who has a very detailed blog looking into the history of each of the metro stations, for example. You, if you don't want to put that whole thing, you can put an excerpt here, you can put a link here, and go to stuff you've already done elsewhere. It, this can be a place to catalog uh, work that's been done on other sites, bring it all into a place where people can explore and discover that. They can explore and discover neighborhoods, explore and discover uh, stories. Maybe they can also explore and discover, because they're here looking at that stuff, go out to your website, that you something that you uh, have put all your time and energy and, and, uh, and work into elsewhere. Um, so uh, that's just a very basic uh, look at some of the some of the aspects in the website. I don't know if I did the best job of that. Uh, you can obviously spend time looking at it yourself as well to, uh, to uh, find out what's in there that already that you're interested in. Uh, look at your neighborhood. Look at the places, uh, the, the apartments you've lived in. Think about what's around there. Think about stories you've heard, radio, stories you've read, stories you've inherited from uh, your, your, your own family members. Uh, we'd like to see those on the map. We want to see those stories taking shape. All right, I'm just going to go back to the screen share and be a bit more uh, methodological, a bit more about showing you what the different sections of the website are. Okay, so explore. Um, first off, uh, I showed you the legend right here, search points. Uh, when you put in your points, this isn't, you're not obliged to, but you can be quite specific about A, whether it's a history or memory, uh, whether it is it, what neighborhood it's in. You know, if I was interested in, uh, let's say, central Montreal, I was neighbor, interested in Griffintown, you know, uh, I can use the search to filter down just to the points that are about Griffintown. Uh, so let's try that now, and hopefully it won't bug out. Yeah, there we go. 
So here's a point about Griffintown. It's actually an NFB documentary about that. Uh, similarly, uh, we have st uh, categories related to time periods, so neighborhoods, time periods, uh, themes, architecture, arts and culture, business and industry, uh, daily living, community life. Uh, someone, uh, someone caught on that one, for example, saying, you know, we never hear, we don't hear enough about the history of, of, of uh, women's lives uh, in history. A lot of the books are focused uh, and not uh, on, on, on not the kind of uh, house craft, home craft, or or uh, social movements, uh, etc. Anyway, I won't get bogged down on that now. Continuing to tour through education, military, you can see all that. You can also search by keyword. I mean, we've, uh, I'll just turn this off uh, because NFB, I know there's some good examples. Uh, let's say I saw one NFB thing, I want to see more of those. There's so many points on the map. How do I narrow it down to just those ones? I click on that search by key term. And now you can see, I'll just uh, hide this panel again. We can get a, there. So you can see that there, we've already put in a number of them. This one's fun. This is a, a, a night in an emergency ward at the General Hospital uh, in, in 1959. Uh, really fun. And you can see that we come down. I am happen to go. I used to live at this corner. I see, oh, there's something in Montreal Hospital. I'm interested in that. I know that place. And all of a sudden, now I'm back in 1959 watching the goings-on in uh, that emergency room back then. I'll just skip ahead a bit. Or not. Yeah, we don't have to wait on that. Yeah. She will be given sedation. And when she has calmed down, her story will be checked by the police. It may be that she is only hysterical. Oh, no. <laughs> Emergency knows from everywhere. Yeah, so times change, right? It may be that she's only hysterical. Okay, very good. Um, I'm just going to zero that out again. Click on Explore to go back to the top. Okay, so uh, Legend, Search Points, I've shown you those. I've shown you you can double-click to zoom. You click and drag to uh, to uh, to pan the map around for people that aren't as familiar as this. Uh, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, you can buzz it around really quickly, explore neighborhoods, explore themes. Lots of fun. Um, to create an account is really easy. Um, you've you've been exploring. You think you're interested in taking part now? Oh, here here's another one. Just before I do that, right here, this little bar here, find an address. Um, uh, oh, I was going to type in my home address. Maybe not. <laughs> but let's say, uh, let's say 39, 3990 Saint Laurent Boulevard, Montreal. Boom. And it takes me right there. So that's another way to get around, to navigate the map. To click the zoom, to click the drag the search bar. Um, I showed you that we have different map styles here and we have those historical maps. That's good. Uh, to create an account, just to get back to where I was, create an account, super easy. You need a name and you need an email. That's really it. Um, first name, Bob, last name, Smithers, email, smithers at email.com. Uh, the Smithers and set a password, click register, that's it. It's done. You've got an account. Um, that's really all there is to it. I'll just come back here for a moment. Um, so yeah, I think that gives uh, hopefully a good tour of the different segments of the website. Uh, if you're familiar with other mapping sites, it's pretty common. Uh, I'm going to toss over to Francois now, who's going to show you how easy it is to put a point, to log in and put a point. And that'll be pretty much it for the live stream tour of the website. So we'll sum up after that and uh, go to the Q&A. So here we are. Uh, Francois, yeah. go ahead. Shall I just put you on the screenshot right yeah. away? Okay, here we go. Contributing a so, point. Hello, everyone. So we will have a look at the contribute section. So uh, in order to contribute, you will see that you need uh, to create first an account. Um, so after you have your account, when you enter on the site, you just have to log in each time you, uh, you are new to the site. So you enter your, uh, your name, your username. I will enter mine there. So FDA at QLF. 
Quebec Labrador Foundation, my password there, and I log in. Oh, just one second. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there seems to be a little problem there, just it will not be long. Okay, here we are. So you will see that there uh, they are only okay, there are only five easy steps to contribute uh, new data in the site. The first one is to locate your pin uh, on the map. So you will you will see that you have a blue pin just there, and you have to drag it and drop it at the right location. Uh, as Jeff told you, you can have a better view uh, of the map of Montreal. You can zoom in there. You can also use uh, the church bar to have a precise address. Uh, so for instance, we can have this one. Uh, I will show you a pin in uh, Longueuil. So I will type there 39 Street Saint Charles. Okay, here we are. So, uh, for instance, my pin, I will uh, put a pin about an old fort in Longueuil, the Fort Longueuil. It was built during the French regime uh, at the end of the 17th century. Uh, if you are not sure if this is the right location, you can use the Google Street View in order to make sure that you are exactly where you are. So there I can see that I'm just in front of a church because uh, indeed there there's now a church at the same site uh, where the fort was standing so I can now uh, drag the pin and drop it directly at the right location so the first step is done the second one uh, is to uh, choose to pick up a title and name for your story so only a few words you can type for instance for long a uh, for what I would like to do now it can be also a title about uh, a significant uh, pers uh, person of the, of the history of Montreal, uh, like the, a mayor or a sportsman or someone like that. It can be also the name of a special event in the history of Montreal. After that, you choose, is it uh, an history or a memory? So as uh, Jeff told you, history is more factual, more encyclopedia type. And memory is about life experience, uh, traditional ways of living in different neighborhoods. Uh, so for now, it's about an historical fort. It's part of history. And then we can add um, a short description, so two or three sentences that give an overview of your story. Uh, try to catch the attention and the interest of the website users. Uh, so you have a summary of your pin there. Charles Moine built a fortified residence in the Seigneury of Longueuil at the end of the 17th century as a protection against Iroquois attacks. In 1775, during the American Revolution, the Fort Longueuil was occupied by the American troops. In 1810, the fort has been demolished, but its stones were reused to build a church at the same site. And it, we are done with the second step. Now we have the third step, uh, put the full text about your story. So you can provide as much details as you want, interesting fact, uh, funny, and um, funny details that you want people to know. Uh, you can say who was involved in this story, uh, where did it happen. Uh, so provide the details and don't forget also to provide at the bottom of your text uh, the sources of your information. So where did you find it? Was it in a website, in an article, in some archive, uh, and historical books? So you can provide all your sources there. And finally, uh, this is done for the step three. As you can see, it's very uh, quick. You can, you can also write your text directly in the box, or you can write it in Word and then copy and paste it. After that, the step four of five. Uh, so now you can add some media to your text. You can add some picture. Uh, you just have to browse uh, in your computer and uh, to find the right picture that you want. Uh, there's some great uh, bank of pictures, for instance, at the Mekor Museum on their website. Uh, they have online picture free to use. Uh, you just have to include the caption to make sure that you give credit uh, to the right person. So now, for instance, we will have uh, the remains of Fort Longueuil, uh, a drawing made by John Drake in uh, 1825. So we have the picture. We can upload another if we want. 
uh, we have a second one for the Ford Longueuil, one of the owner of the first owner of the Ford, Charles Lemoine, was the first baron of Longueuil. So uh, it's also possible to add a video, so video from YouTube. Um, if you have in a video, uh, YouTube account, you can put the URL of this video and include the caption. Or uh, if some of your friend or someone you know have a video, you can put the URL. But make sure that you have the right uh, to use this video. That uh, so make sure to have the per the, the authorization. Um, after that, we continue with the the final step, the five, the step five of five. So now you can say uh, what are the categories related uh, to your pin. It's an optional uh, step also, as was the um, the fourth step. It's also optional. But we suggest very much to do it because it, uh, it adds some interesting uh, feature to, uh, to, to your data. So for instance, there, we have five main, main sections in the Greater Montreal area. We will choose for now um, the South Shore. We have a list of neighborhoods for each section. So now we will select uh, Longueuil. And if you don't see the one that you are looking for, you can select Author and write the, the right name. So Longueuil, after that you can pick one of the time period, one or more than one. For instance, this fort uh, was built during, yeah, it was this period, yeah, during the, the French colonization, but it was, it remained also during the other period until 18, 1810, so the only these two for now. And after that, it's related to which, which team, so architecture for now, and it was also a place for battles uh, the American troops were there during the American Revolution, so we can click on uh, military. And this one was related to the French regime and also to the Americans during the American uh, Revolution, so we can select one of the different uh, communities, or we can also uh, type a new one. Maybe for this one we will type uh, French. And we are now done. We are, all the five steps are done. We can now contribute and the, the pin will be added. So shall I do that? I think we, uh, we can do that. So we will have a new pin on the map. As easy as that. Yeah, and if you're ready to go, you can just, uh, if you got another one, you can just click add another point right there and, uh, and keep going. So uh, just coming back to the camera here, that's essentially, let me uh, pull up, that's essentially how, how the site works. Um, we've gone into more detail. I mean, we could have done that uh, if we weren't talking and trying to tell a bit of the stories around it. Obviously, we could have done that in just moments. We could have done that uh, uh, seconds to create the account, uh, a couple of minutes to put up points. Uh, that's really uh, what we wanted to show you today. Um, I would just, uh, maybe to close, I'll just sort of, just to try and again stress that uh, I mean, we put up uh, just now, Francois had, had uh, chosen a fort, a military place. That's pretty traditional, uh, historical kind of focus. Um, uh, just to take an example like music, uh, you may not know that uh, Montreal was a main center in the history of recording industry. Emil Berliner, the guy who invented the gramophone, who took Thomas Edison's phonograph that he thought was going to be for business and realized, hey, we can use this for music, and basically started the whole entertainment industry. And his first record pressing plant in North America was down in St. Henry, right by the Home Depot. That's a point that we have on the map. Um, so, obviously, if you have that kind of specialized expert knowledge, we want to see that on the map. But if instead your interest is the underground studios where punk bands played in the 80s uh, or uh, um, uh, uh, in the West Island uh, a musical uh, a band a band leader who influenced a lot of people or a band group that does summer concerts going back 30 years down overlooking the water under a gazebo um, Whatever it is, or uh, if you know there's a story in your family, say, of a local debt owner who always made sure uh, 
uh, your aunt uh, who was going through tough times, her and her kids, that they always had food even when they did I mean, or uh, a swim coach who taught everyone in your neighborhood to swim. I mean, one of the examples that was handed to me early in this process was a Spacing Montreal story, I think by Alana Hefez, who um, had written a story about the Snowden and how the De Carri going through had a certain effect in splitting the neighborhood back when it was built. Uh, but then a year later, in the comments section, for some reason, somebody posted something about being left at a store by their parents when they were a kid, and, and that reading the story reminded them of that image, and then somebody else came in and said, oh, you just reminded me of my own experiences growing up there in the 50s and as a gay, uh, as a gay boy, a gay man, uh, and, and this is what I remember that neighborhood, and then that went off and off and for another couple of dozen uh, of exchanges. That kind of ex conversation, that kind of detail, the people's history stuff that doesn't necessarily get into textbooks. I mean, we, we started on the theme of, of, of uh, education, and then uh, Francois and I kind of went a bit more broad. But just to bring it back to that before I toss over to Ben to see if he has anything to add at the end, um, that kind of history doesn't necessarily make it into the textbooks, doesn't necessarily make it into the curriculum. Uh, but community-based learning, uh, I know, is, is something that a lot of people are interested in right now. Um, this is a community-based learning project as well. Um, so I think we'll just close it at that. We went a bit longer than we intended for this video. Uh, ben, do you have anything to add before we go? No, just it's a resource. Use it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could have been a 30-second in, in, in a workshop. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. I'm going to end the live broadcast. If you're watching uh, the live stream and want to join the, conversa uh, the conversation, I'm going to go check my email now, see if anyone has asked to join. Uh, and then we'll wait uh, to see who else comes in, and we'll go to that. Thank you very much. Uh, Mapping.MontrealMosaic.com. You have our emails there. If you have any questions at any point, let us know. Thank you.